an often overlooked and underrated leader, today we're going to go over one of my absolute favorite domination civs, Chandragupta's India. We're going to go over his abilities, how to start out your games with Chandragupta, and give him a ranking for each victory type, as well as a final overall victory score. Remember everyone, if you enjoy this and other videos I put out, why not take the time to give me a like or a subscription? I'm working very hard to get up to my first 1000 subs, and I can only do it if you help me get there. Chandragupta is like Alexander on steroids. Even though Chandi actually has far less bonuses towards domination than Alexander does, they are much stronger. Chandi drops about half of the bonuses from base game India to focus all in on their unique unit, the Varu. The Varu is an elephant horseman replacement. It unlocks at horseback riding and requires no resources to build. They are more expensive, and they do take longer to build, but they pack a punch. They ignore zone of control, which means that you can move anywhere, although they are slower than a horseman because they only have two movement, but that doesn't matter because you'll find out later. They debuff nearby enemy units by 5 combat strength, which negates the DD combat bonus. And once again, just to mention it, they don't require horses to build. Imagine if Alexander's units didn't require resources. How much easier would it be to do early game pushes and those early game timing attacks with them? This one unit makes Chandi so much funner, or so much more fun for domination, because there's just so much less standing in your way to starting a domination game. Combine this with Chandi's leader ability, Arthra Shastra, which allows you to declare wars of territorial expansion and military training instead of mobilization, and you get the ultimate one-two punch. Now, the war of territorial expansion Cassis Bellum is not the key factor here. All the Cassis Bellum does by itself is to generate you fewer grievances, and that's pretty good. It lets you deal with loyalty, but that's not that great. But Arthra Shastra combines this with a plus two movement and plus five combat strength bonus. And if you're using Varu, that's essentially a plus 10 combat strength bonus for the first 10 turns of war. That's nuts. It allows you to aggressively move into the AI without fear in the early game. You just get that snowball, and Civ is a snowball-y game, the snowball that allows you to win Civ games within the first 30 turns, you get it reliably, unlike Alexander or other domination Civs that need resources. When I play as Chandragupta, I forego religion altogether. Even though I'm playing as India, Chandragupta does religion differently. I quickly expand out to three cities as early as I can, settling two cities closest to my weakest neighbor, unlocking my Cass's belly. I get Magnus up to chop out monuments, and I use my money to buy builders and try to boost my way to horseback riding and military training. Military training is not that far into the tree. You only need to build three tile improvements, destroy a barb camp, which you're going to do anyway, construct an encampment, which you're going to do anyway to get great general points going, and you'll have to hard tech games and recreation because I doubt that you'll get construction boosted and research before then, and boom, you're already there. When I play as Chandragupta, I don't build many scouts, I just build one, maybe two, which is my standard, but instead of scouts, I'll build one or two slingers. So I'll build scout, then a slinger or two, and then I focus on my monuments, buy builders, chop out settlers, and grab two or three Varu, chopping them out in my other cities if I can. Magnus helps with this a lot. I grab a cheap hero if I'm in the game mode, or I go for vampires if I'm playing for secret societies. I denounce five turns before finishing my military training, and boom, one neighbor and often two neighbors are completely wiped off the map, off the map with my Varu push. I am often, once I declare that war, I am building nothing but Varu and going straight through. If they have walls, I build or purchase myself a battering ram and still just Varu all the way. It almost never fails. When I think about how often I have to re-roll as Alexander and how reliably I get this strategy off as Chandragupta, it kind of makes me laugh that Alexander, the ultimate domination uh, figure in history, just doesn't, doesn't get this bonus. For my first domination, hopefully I'm conquering someone who's founded a religion. As I dominate the next Civ with my upgraded Varus, they actually last quite a while thanks to your buffs and their debuffs, I spread that religion around in my cities. 
If the second Civ I dominate founded a religion, I also spread that religion around to my high pop cities. I'm not trying to convert my cities. That's the key here, because as India, you don't need to convert your cities. I'm just spreading them so that one population in all of my cities has that religion. Thanks to India's bonus, Dharma, I get all of the follower beliefs of any religion in my cities. And follower beliefs can be really strong. Work ethic, the best belief in the game, is a follower belief. It gives your cities production, and production is super useful for military games. You can get choral music, which gives you culture. You can get feed the world, which gives you food. You can get faith in gold on shrines. You can get housing to beef up the loyalty of your cities. You can get amenities, which always helps in domination games. Dharma itself also gives you amenities per religion in each city, meaning you might not get Alexander's lack of war weariness for free, but you set that up, and if you set it up right, you get that and the culture or faith or food or gold. India's finest, final bonus is a step well, and that's not a great unique improvement, it's better than the chateau, but it's not a terrible unique improvement. It gives a flatland tile plus one food and a full point of housing, and that housing is the important part because housing is kind of limited in the early game. Farms only provide a half point of housing by themselves, so you're kind of getting double a farm. You also get extra food as you move through the tech tree and extra housing as well. And if you place that step well next to a farm, you get more food, plus one for each farm. If placed next to a holy site, you get extra faith. This allows them to really shine early to mid game. But once you start getting feudalism, and once you start getting better food on farms in the late game, they tend to fall off. You'll build them in almost every city, and you'll build a few for housing. And then you'll just switch over to farm triangles later. For domination, Chandragupta gets a clear 10 out of 10. Movement bonuses, combat bonuses, amenity bonuses, these are all warmonger bonuses. The only thing that he could do better is get a free unit like Byzantium or Abraham Lincoln does. But your resourceless Varu can paint the map that beautiful blue color early in the game and it just feels great. Chandragupta is also really good at the religion game. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10 for this. Your religious units get the bonus from your wars as well, meaning that they are stronger and faster. Dharma allows your missionaries to spread two extra times, meaning your faith gets more use in the long run. That also means if you go for the domination game, it is easier to conserve your faith for the Grandmaster Chapel because you're buying less missionaries to spread your religion around. However, for a religious game, you don't get any bonuses towards securing a great profit, which makes it kind of a crapshoot if someone like Arabia is in your game. Any good warmonger is going to be good at culture and science victories as well. You're going to conquer lots of land for national parks. Just be careful not to fully wipe out civs because that's going to make your culture game harder. You also get lots, you also get lots of faith generation from step wells, and you're probably going to be conquering holy sites, so you can get naturalists and you can get rock bands pretty easy. Your religion bonuses will often allow you to get Jesuit education, meaning you can purchase campus districts uh, buildings with faith. That pushes you in the direction of a science victory. So 5 out of 10 for both. You just don't get very many production bonuses outside of maybe getting work ethic, and you don't get culture bonuses outside the ones that come from AI generated religion. So it's a solid strategy, but it's not optimized, because you're depending on domination to get you to that point, and you're also depending on the AI to make good decisions, so why not just finish your domination game out. His weakest victory is Diplo. As a warmonger, with strong pushes towards taking cities and capitals, you're going to build up grievances and lose Diplo favor. And as I said before, you get no bonuses towards wonder construction and no bonuses towards gold, all of which are needed for that Diplo win. So 3 out of 10. You can do it, but why bother? I really don't like Diplo victories. Chandi is fun. And whenever I play him, I always compare him to other early game domination civs like Cyrus and Alex. Thinking about how amazing Alex would be if his unit cost no strategic resources, it's, it's, it's crazy. Think about how much more of the map you could conquer early. Because of this, I don't see why Chandi doesn't get the love from the community that I feel for him. The music, the elephants, the color of the map when you're painting it, that nice blue, all combine to make a really great experience, and his flexibility lets him transition to other victory types if you don't want to invade cross continents. Chandi's version of India gets an A from me. 
He is an A+, there's a lot that could be done better, and his kit doesn't fully synergize perfectly together, but the two things that do match, match incredibly well. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to comment down below what you think about Chandragupta, and next time we'll be back with a look at Cleopatra in another double episode. Goodbye.